Um, and then on nuclear weapons in particular, I think in recent years, both Trump and Putin have withdrawn their countries from some of the landmark arms control agreements that were signed in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Um, so many of the safeguards that were actually put in place in response to these anxieties of the, the early 1980s around nuclear war are actually in the process of being dismantled or have already been dismantled. Um, and this is even as Russia has invaded another sovereign country and has repeatedly threatened to use nuclear weapons uh, since uh, February 2022. And then meanwhile, I think we see the emergence of China as a more significant military force, which is complicating the picture as it's rapidly expanding its own nuclear arsenal. So as in the Cold War period, it was a fairly, well, a, a relatively simple uh, situation of kind of two clear superpowers, whereas here the emergence of a third actor with an expanding nuclear uh, arsenal, I think, further complicates the picture. So overall, I think we are heading back towards a situation of greater unpredictability and also of greater tensions between these countries, uh, which is something much closer to what we saw in the early 1980s uh, and even in, in the early 1960s in the era of the Cuban Missile Crisis. There is kind of a return to the, the people thinking about um, sort of nuclear destruction or the possibility of it. Um, so for years, so after the, 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 you know, the supposed end of the Cold War, sort of early 90s, um, yeah, nuclear war kind of comes off off the uh, off the table a little bit in terms of representation. Uh, so the James Bond series, you know, which, which very often featured, um, you know, the threat of these supervillains getting hold of nuclear weapons, et cetera, et cetera, or Britain's Polaris submarines. Um, you know, they gradually move on to, to think about other threats like cyber terrorism and, and, th and things like this. But it doesn't disappear completely, uh, but there is an interesting recalibration of, um, you know, of the period in which the day after was filmed, for example. Um, so films like uh, Sally Potter's uh, Ginger and Rosa, we kind of look back in almost with a nostalgia to that period when, you know, we, we were all scared, you know. Um, so there's an interesting form of nostalgia for the period in which these these, these horrific things were being depicted. And of course, the, the, the threat of them actually occurring was was very much on people's minds. 